What's up everybody? I'm Jackie Terry. In this video, you're in for a real treat. I'm going to talk about different shot angles and the camera movements that you can use to your advantage. Movies, music videos, documentaries, and etc. These camera movements, angles, transitions hopefully will help you out in your future music videos or future films so without further ado let's get into it so the first camera movement is called static shock and actually this camera movement has no camera movement at all see what you do is you place the tripod on a fixed position and let it sit so it can be at a high angle or a low angle just at a fixed position to the point where it's pleasing to the audience so what this camera movement is going to do is it's going to allow it's going to allow the actor to shine it's going to allow for the composition of the shot to stand out a lot more it's also great for dialogue if there's a sense of importance in the scene so if my actor is saying something really deep or he's emotional or she's emotional, I will put the camera in a static shock position to really pay attention to close detail of what she's saying. A static shock, since it's on a fixed tripod and the camera is not moving, you can actually use all different shot angles to place it. It could be over the shoulder, it could be at a high, it could be at a low angle. Any angle, as long as the camera is not moving. You see, sometimes no movement is better than movement at all. So if you don't have to move the camera, don't do it. You're gonna get a lot more cinematic footage by not moving the camera and having the camera in a fixed position as long as the composition and the angles are right, you're going to have beautiful footage. There's a thing in filmmaking called motivated movement. So only move the camera if you have to. If you're tracking somebody, then move the camera. Or if you're pan zooming in on somebody, which we'll talk about in this video too. But there's a thing called motivated movement. So if you don't have to move the camera, set on the tripod in a fixed position to the point where it's accommodating to the actors and let the actors shine with that tripod shot. But later on, if you want to add movement, you can. Just do another take with a gimbal or a handheld, then add movement. But it's always good to have a static shock tripod shot with no movement at all. The camera is in a fixed location and you're allowing the actors a chance to shine. So the next movement is called the pan. The pan rotates the camera in a fixed location, left to right. So if two people are having a conversation and they're going back and forth, back and forth, I will take my camera in a fixed location Rotate it left, rotate it right. However, if I want to raise the intensity of a moment, it's something extravagant or something amazing that's happened or two people are just going back and forth, back and forth, and the intensity is super high, I would do a whip pan. So I rotate the camera fast. Whip pan. And doing a whip pan, you will create a sort of a motion blur, which you can... Use that motion blur as a transition into another shot. So whip pans come in handy. So a pan shot can also reveal a subject as well. So I'm slowly taking my camera and I'm revealing who this subject is, who this person is. So you can go slow and reveal who the person is. Or if it's a conversation, you can go back and forth, back and forth. 
that is a pan. If I slow the pan down, it can also reveal information. So a pan doesn't really have to be left and right. It could be up and down. So I can go up and reveal the information of who this character is or what this thing is I'm looking at. So I raise the camera up just like this, raise it down. Leaning on to the next movement, a tilt. So a tilt can move the camera up and down. Just like this, up and down. So if I can, if I move it up, then I'm revealing a subject. You don't know who this person is or what this object is, but I'm revealing the subject to you. And it's going all the way up just like this. It's being used to reveal information. A tilt pan can also give a character a sense of dominance and vulnerability. So, prime example, if I move this up, my character is looking more powerful. It's coming up. However, if I do the tilt pan downwards from a bird's eye angle shot, could be ideally showing the character's vulnerability. It could make the character feel weaker if I bring it up and slowly look down at the character. It can make them feel vulnerable, weak, scared, afraid. So once again, it's all about knowing your angles. The tilt pen is really good at causing emotions to your subject, making your character feel weak, or making your character feel a sense of dominance, or essentially just revealing an object or a building or a subject or a thing. Tilt pens work really good for this. So the push in is the next one. It's all about moving the camera forward. It's about emphasizing the subject or the moment prime example it's really good to use if you want to capture a character's thought process so if i'm in a deep thought and i'm thinking about something that's really on my mind i'm really distraught i'm really stressed out i would use the pushing slowly pushing into my subject all the way in to really, really get his thought process. It's also a good technique to initiate or engage conflict. So, if there's a fight or an argument scene, I would slowly do a push in with the camera. Slow. And as, it get and as the cameras get closer, the emotion of the actors, the intensity rises. So push-ins are really good to implicate conflict and just capture the thought process of the character. What is, what is he thinking? Or what is she thinking? It could go either way. Push-ins are really good to really get inside of a character's head. The push-out is the exact opposite. It de-emphasizes the character. It's a technique used to disconnect a character from the audience. So, in a conflict scene, if I'm pushing out, the character is badly beating up, and I'm pushing out with my camera, I'm slowly taking the audience away from the subject and leaving the character abandoned. It's a good way to detach a character from a scene or show emotional abandonment. And it's a good way to unveil the context or the setting of a scene. Especially if you're around a whole bunch of buildings and you push out, you end up seeing the whole dynamic of the whole entire scene just by pushing out. You see the buildings, you might see the cars, you might see things that things and subjects that you might have not seen with the camera pushed in. So when I push out, I'm revealing context and subjects that you might have not seen with the camera pushed in all the way. Next 
it's a tracking shot. The tracking shot physically moves the camera within the scene tracking the subject. So I'm basically using this camera and I'm following the subject, tracking its movements, whether I'm in front of them or behind them or behind her, I'm tracking the movements. And what this is going to do, it's going to immerse the audience in the scene. I'm tracking the character, the audience is like, wow, where's this character going? Because I'm tracking his movements. I'm behind him or in front of him. So a tracking shot can either follow or lead your subject either way. But either way, the audience is going to be immersed because if you do a tracking shot, the attention is on where this character is going. You really don't know. So whether you're behind or in front of the character, the tracking shot can be used as a sense of intensity or it could just be used to follow a character it could be used to tell a story no matter what the tracking shot can tell a story on where this character is going or where is he leaving from perfect way to tell a story just by tracking your subject i would suggest using a gimbal are a steady tripod to track your subject so you won't get any camera shake. So the arc shot is an orbit shot. So the arc shot happens when the character is standing completely still, but the camera itself orbits around the subject just like this. So my subject is standing completely still but my camera is orbit around the subject. And this really creates a dynamic effect. You might have seen it in the Bad Boys movie when Will Smith and Martin Lawrence, at the end of the chase scene, the camera slowly orbits around them, just like this. And it, it just adds more of a dynamic, powerful effect to the moment at hand, because now, the subject isn't moving, but the camera is circling all the way around them. Very, very good technique. I suggest using a gimbal, once again, or a steady tripod for the shot. However, this can also be filmed vertically coming down. So orbit can be filmed vertically coming down. So these are going to add some really, really good shots to your resume. So the arc shot is really, really good to use. Now we're going to talk about camera angles next, which is my favorite. I use a lot of camera angles. Camera angles are all about how we are meant to perceive the subject. We're going to start with one of my favorite camera angles, the low angle shot. A low angle shot is any subject below a character's eye line looking up at them is a low angle shot. It's used to express dominance from the heroes and villains alike. So if I have my camera at a low angle shot, then I'm expressing dominance. I'm expressing power. And you use this for heroes or villains. It doesn't matter. Ideally, the low angle shot is going to make your character look more powerful and menacing. It will never make your character look weak. On a contrary, the high angle shot Camera's pointed at a high angle, just like this. So a high angle shot will be filmed just like this, and that's the opposite of a low angle shot. It's going to make the character feel weak, feel insecure. However, a high angle shot doesn't always have to be about the weakness of a character. A high angle shot can be an aerial shot as well, and it can express the vast environment of of the landscape. So shooting at a high angle or an aerial shot, you can actually show your environment. Oh everything. Same with the so same with the low angle shot as well. So these work hand in hand together. However, most of the time a high angle shot is used to make a character feel in superior weak or insignificant but you can also use high angle shots 
to establish the environment or using in sight with a character moving within a larger world. So unlike the high angle, a over the head shots points the camera at a 90 degree angle with the camera pointing face down, just like this. So the camera is at a 90 degree angle and it's pointing straight down just like this. It could be in a fixed stationary tripod shot as well, but as long as the camera is at a 90 degree angle, we call this an overhead shot and it's pointing straight down. This can be used to express complex camera movements. You can use it to actually bring down on your subject slowly just like this. Once again, the camera is at a 90 degree angle and I'm coming down. It's not necessarily a high angle shot like this, but it's at a 90 degree angle and I'm pointing it down just like this. Really good angle to reveal a crime scene or to establish even a connection to the divine. So if your character is looking up at the sky and you're at a higher angle, if you're on a step ladder, you can easily do an overhead shot at 90 degree angle and see the camera actually coming down to him like he's seeing an alien or he's connected to the divine he's seeing god whatever you want but the overhead shot really good shot to use i suggest everybody use it really good for complex movements really good for storytelling i use this in one of my modern reels i use the overhead shot to show slowly show the intensity of the moment at hand the overhead shot can also be used in fight scenes as well. So we're going to talk about the Dutch angle shot next. So this is the camera movement that sort of throws us off balance. So the Dutch angle skews the horizontal axis of the frame. So if I'm horizontal, I will slowly just tilt the camera just like this. And this was called a Dutch angle. And what this is going to do, it's going to bring the audience to a sense of something's wrong something's not right and we use this in highly intense moments of a character if he's going through some things or if he's talking to somebody suspicious or you know something is about to go down we use a dutch angle shot to upset the balance of the screen so we can show the audience that something's not right something is about to happen something is about to immediately go down just from the Dutch angle shot. So next we're going to talk about the eye level shot. It's the most common used shot in the film industry because it's eye level. So you're automatically creating an instant connection with the audience. It reminds me of the high and low angle. It's very judgmental. So if I'm filming somebody at eye level, then I'm paying close attention to their detail their facial expressions, their body language. I'm making sure I get all of that at an eye level shot, which you can because basically it's showing great detail of the face. The eye level shot is probably going to cut off toward the chest. So the next is a shoulder level shot. It's kind of like an eye level shot, but we drop the camera a little bit below the eyes so the camera will be, will be right here right where the shoulders are at shoulder level shots are also used in conversations they can also cause emphasis on the height difference of a character so if a character is tall or short you can do a shoulder shot to emphasize the height difference also Shoulder shots are really good to use in romantic moments. So if I had two subjects that were dancing up close to each other, I would use a shoulder shot to bring the audience more in. Because with the shoulder shot, I'm able to get the shoulders, but I'm also able to get great detail on the face as well. So on the shoulder shot, you raise the camera a little bit higher than the eye level shot. Bring it up to the shoulders, and this is a great effect to show great detail if the two characters are really close up to each other. And it's basically good for conversation dialogue as well. So the hip level shot 
can be used in every genre. Especially if a person has a gun or an item above the waist. You will film it in the hip level shot. So you will go all the way down to the midsection. And this is going to pay emphasis on the character's midsection. So if the character has a cool belt or he has a gun, he has anything below the hips will definitely emphasize what your character has. So make sure when you're filming a hip shot, make sure your character does have an item or something indicating that he's reaching for something on his hip. So you can film a hip shot. Or if your character has some nice thighs or nice legs, you could film a hip shot. You could film a hip shot that way too. And once again, all these movements, these camera movements, these camera angles, you could combine the, these movements together. So if I wanted to track somebody who has nice hips or a hip shot or they have a gun, I will do a hip shot, but I also will do a tracking movement at the same time. Combining the movements and the camera angles all work together. They, they play hand in hand. So all these tips I'm showing you, you can combine the angles and the movements together. It's very beneficial in filming. Knee level shot is almost equivalent to the low angle shot. But you're tracking the character's knees. You're going lower. So this is a great way to reveal detail that might have been missed in a wider angle shot. So if you do a knee shot, these are very unique. If you just want to track a character's movements or play close attention to the detail. If the character is walking, you would do or even running, you would do a knee level shot. And these knee level shots look really good once you combine the rest of the angles together. A knee level shot can be a very good way to track your character through their environment. Also, you can combine a knee level shot with the tilt shot and start filming your character walking from the knee level and then slowly go into the tilt. Once again, combining camera movements. In order to become a great filmmaker, you have to know the camera movements and the camera angles, which I'm showing you in this video right now. So now we go into the ground level shot, which once again is kind of like a low angle knee level, but the camera is all the way toward the ground. You're all the way on the ground. So you, you're you tracking your character's movement. So this is a good way to track the detail of your character so if your character has some nice shoes or if he's walking through an environment or if he's walking through a crime scene or just walking you're going to get some really great details with a low ground angle shot especially if he's walking through grass or anything like that a ground level shot is just beautiful and then once again you can Combine all these shots and reveal your character in any shot. But a ground level shot is a good way of tracking, tracking your character's motion and playing close attention to detail from the ground. Now, we're going to talk about the different type of shots. We're going to go with the establishing shot next. The establishing shot is wide enough to establish the geography of the environment. It shows the scales and the subject in relation to the environment. So, for instance, if I'm doing an establishing shot, not only will you see me, but you will see a vast amount of the environment. So, you will see the geography, you will see the landscape, you will see everything. And then you will see me, but you will see the whole environment. So the audience already knows that I'm in, in a vast location. So these established shots are very good when you start off the film, straight out the gate. When you start off and you show an establishing shot, the audience already knows where the character is at. So it's good to make a character feel vulnerable or even insignificant if it's a big enough environment or it's good enough to show the vast world the character is in. Very good to show off landscapes, buildings, everything, etc. 
establishing shots are perfect. And I believe everybody should use an establishing shot and starting off a film or starting off a next scene to show the location of the environment and to show what type of emotion the character is feeling in that environment. So the master shot shows the location and the geography and the characters in a scene, all in one scene. So rather than an establishing shot being far away and you can see the vast environment, the master shot is a little up closer where you can still see the environment, but you can also see the character is a little bit more closer. You can see the whole entire scene. So master shots really tell the story. It's bringing the camera, your audience, more closer into the connections of the actors. So if you have the three actors together, you will want to film a master shot first to establish where they are at in their environment, in their location, and relationships to each other. So a master shot will display all the fine details of the location and the characters together. So the wide shot positions the character further away from the camera. So it can be used to make a character feel lonely, out of place, out of touch. It can also show the character's relationship to the environment. A lot of filmmakers use the wide shot to make the character's film overwhelmed or just out of place out of touch in this vast environment they don't know how to get out it makes the character feel a sense of loneliness and frustration so wide shots very very important i would suggest using a wide angle lens to film all your wide shots particularly 11 mil will work so next is the full shot and it reaches from your top and bottom of the frame Meaning, if I'm in a full shot, you're going to see my feet. You're going to see my whole body. Also, you're going to see my facial expressions as well. So a full shot is perfect if you want to display attention on your character. So if you want to display the whole outfit, the, the whole facial expressions, the whole body language of this character, you will do a full shot, which is highly beneficial because now... The audience can see your character's outfit, they can see the arms, and it really gives your actor or subject a chance to stand out as an actor and be a little bit more vibrant because now you can see the character's whole entire body. So a full shot can be used to really, really display the skills of an actor. So if you can incorporate full shots in your filming, they look great. It can explain a character's personality and it could really put sh a shine on your actors doing a full shot. Medium full shot is based off the top of a character's head. So it's used to show more emphasis on how dangerous a character is or how confident a character is. It can also be referred to as a cowboy shot because you're filming, because you're filming the medium full shot below the waist. So that's all you're getting. You're not getting the full body shot. You're just getting below the waist. But it's also a very ideal shot if you want to show a character's confidence or power or he's dangerous. You want to do a medium full shot. Medium close up is framed from the chest to the head. Medium close ups are all about. Medium close-ups are all about reducing distractions and prioritizing details. So, if I'm filming a medium close-up, I'm not really focused on the wide-angle shot or the background in general. I'm focusing on the character itself, the character's facial expressions. So, I'm not focusing what's in the background. I'm focusing on the character itself. The character can be angry. The character can be sad. It can be happy. However, a medium close-up, however, a medium close-up frame from the chest and the head is going to allow me to get those facial expressions, the body languages I need to tell the story. So if I want to go deep inside of a character's mind or a thought process or something deep is about to happen, I will film my character with a medium close-up shot. Once again, medium close-up 
is framed from the chest to the head. Now the high close up is the most powerful visual close up you can do. It literally highlights and changes the emotion on the screen. Your high close ups are basically arranged at eye level. So it's not like a medium close up. You're going a little bit higher to the eyes, just about right here. And I'm paying close attention to the detail on the face. We filmmakers normally use this technique when there is fear or there is anxiety or the character is scared. We use a high close up shot to show the emotion or the anger on a character's face, the fear, the anxiety, the resentment. And then it also pulls the audience more into the character's soul. So they say the eyes are the windows of the soul. So this is a great technique. A high close up will help you exponentially tell your story in movie making especially if there is drama or anything big is about to happen you will definitely use a high close-up to deeply engage your audience on how the character is feeling at the moment so a extreme close-up frames the subject to isolate a specific body part of the character so a string close-up, basically, it could be the character's eyes. So you're just filming the eyes, not any other body part. Or it could be the character's lips. Or it could be the character's hands. But however, you're not filming anything else. It's a string close-up. So you normally see this in gun battles, a gun show, a uh, uh, standoff. You will see a string close-up on the character's eyes. Or if a character is nervous, you will see a string close up on their lips, their facial expressions, and etc. In most movies, the eyes are particularly the focus on an extreme close up shot. I'm Jackie Terry. I hope you like this video. These are all the camera movements and the camera angles that I learned when I took film school and it has helped my production advance to levels I have never dreamed of. Just by learning this in film school, I learned all these camera angles and I'm able to implement it in my films, movies, commercials, media production. My advice is to use this video, study it, and learn these different camera angles for yourself and apply it in your own production. Once again, you can also take online classes, which I did, to learn this stuff as well.